NanoHub U online instruction. Hey everyone, welcome to lecture 117. Continuing on the previous theme of eigensolvers, we're going to look at targeted eigensolvers. So what is the difference between a targeted and regular eigensolver? Basically, what we do is we shift the Maxwell eigen operator by a finite amount, which is shown in this equation. So we actually subtract a value of omega m squared over c squared from that operator, and then we square it. And so the rationale for doing that is twofold. First of all, it allows us to actually target like higher frequency states. And so particularly if we have a very highly repetitive structure that we're simulating and we're interested in a defect state, defect state almost by definition is well above the first band. It may be like the 50th, maybe the 100th band. So we would prefer to just skip through uh, bands 1 through 49 until we get to the one that we're interested in. And so this allows us to kind of set a lower bound for the value that we're interested in, uh, because as you can see, uh, if the value was actually um, substantially smaller than this omega m, then this new eigen operator ak prime would actually give us like a very large value, so we wouldn't find that first using that new eigen operator. And we can, of course, easily return this to the original basis when we're done. So it's not a big problem. And if we look at the convergence of these sort of calculations, we can actually see that um, these converge very well, like either for small or even large supercells. Of course, it takes a little longer as the cell gets bigger because we have more states to deal with. So it's not necessarily a completely free lunch, but it definitely saves us a lot of time compared to a straightforward brute force approach. And then if we look at the, the performance, the number of iterations as a function of resolution and uh, as a function of the number of bands, certainly the number of iterations is going up in general especially in the case of like increasing the number of bands, which I showed last time, but it's not a catastrophic increase. It's only a mild increase. And so uh, what this tells us basically is that we can now uh, reformulate the problem as we had been discussing in the last couple of lectures as essentially a discrete Fourier transform. And then we can use the fast Fourier uh, transform algorithm twice and then we can get everything to scale like a uh, order of p squared n, which is a very nice scaling, or p squared n log n to be precise. And we can use tensor-based averaging, which will aid us in convergence. And then we can perform a conjugate gradient minimization of the Brock Raleigh qu quotient. And compared to Davidson approach or other kinds of solvers, it's performing just as well, if not better, in most cases. So Next time we'll talk more about uh, the solution methods that we can use and why they're important.